from the heart of Dubai, where tomorrow is being built today to the world. Welcome to the CTO Show with Mehmet. Here, we redefine technology and reimagine possibilities. With Mehmet, delve into the riveting realms of AI, cybersecurity, and digital technology. Experience the thrilling highs and lows of startups. Immerse yourself in the spirit of entrepreneurship and witness the future of business innovation being written in real time. Now, without further ado, let's tune in and explore the future. Hello and welcome back to a new episode of the CTO Show with Mehmet. Today, I'm very pleased to have with me Lan Yandong. Yandong, thank you very much for being with me on the show today. You've got a very rich background and, you know, I don't like to steal the lights from my guests, so I would keep it to you to introduce yourself. Yeah, of course. Uh, thank you for having me, uh, Mehmet, on your show. Uh, it's an honor. Uh, my name is Yandong Liu. Uh, I'm the CTO and the co-founder of Connectly. I guess we can talk about Connectly uh, a little bit later. Uh, first, quickly about myself. Uh, I was born and raised in China. Then I studied computer science in college. I, 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 I grew an interest in, in computer science and AI uh, fairly early on. I, after college, I came to the States to pursue a, a PhD in computer science at Carnegie Mellon University. I was doing like all kinds of like research. I was actually publishing, but more like on the theoretical side. After graduation, I moved to Silicon Valley, like many people did. I started working at various tech companies. Uh, for example, I first worked at, as a researcher in the Yahoo Research sort of continue my academia life publishing all that. Then after Yahoo, I uh, went to Uber um, in 2014, while Uber was really growing uh, through some uh, explosive growth. Uh, after Uber, I became CTO of Strava, you know, the popular fitness app. Uh, I was managing everything technical there. Then after Strava, I started quickly. Great, great, uh, you know, to, to know about you more, Yandong, and uh, what a career, I would say. So, you know, the question that came to my mind, you know, for this journey, uh, so you started more into the academia and then you shifted to more, like, let's say, the practical part of it. Um, and this is something we don't see much, honestly. Like we see usually people who go to the academic career, they, they stay there and they rarely go out, you know, from there. What was, you know, the moment that you felt, you said, okay, I need to take this now to, to, to the real world. So what was the motive behind that? Yes. Uh, that's a very good question. Uh, I, indeed, I was very interesting, more like academia. Uh, uh, live work. I was planning to become a professor if I, I, I'm not doing this. But of course, I shifted my mind uh, uh, many years ago. Uh, I was I was still interested in, in the theoretical and designing uh, a side of that, especially when it comes to machine learning and AI. But I was more uh, fascinated with the potential of AI of transforming real world interactions and making a real world impact. So uh, that's that's why I'm I'm doing this. I I uh, I'm always looking for a real world uh, uh, application out of AI. I'm, I use messaging every day. So when the two uh, you would combine the two ideas, you know that was pretty exhilarating to me. Uh, and um, you know uh, the the. The, the, the concept of, concept of, of starting some new, something new from the ground up, when you have the, when you have the freedom to innovate and push boundaries, uh, that was all very, very attractive. So uh, that's why uh, when I, I, I had this opportunity of starting something new, like Connectly, you know, I, I decided to just, let's just, let's just do it. You know, I always enjoy listening to such inspiring stories, uh, Yandong, because I did, I was not like in, in the academia in the sense as a professor, but because, you know, uh, 
And I was working for a university in the technology department. And, you know, I had to interact a lot with the professors. And sometimes I was telling them, guys, like, we have these really cool ideas. It, would it be nice if you take it out? And, you know, so the thing, you know, I really um, liked your story because you stepped out of a comfort zone, as they say, you know, because, and now we'll talk a little bit about the work you do with Connectly. You know, because it, it, it needs really a brave heart, you know, to, to go into this world. But uh, what inspired you actually to choose, you know, of course, you, you've done a lot of work before, but to take, you know, the path of AI-powered converse, conversational commerce, like why did you choose this specifically? What was the problem that you see or the opportunity that you have identified? Yeah, absolutely. So... Um, Connectly is all about uh, creating this meaningful one-to-one -one relationships between business and, and their, co their customers through the power of messaging. I, I'm a big fan of messaging. I, I use WhatsApp, I use iMessage, I use sometimes SMS when everything else is not available. Uh, I hope, I think you, 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 you do it too. I mean, I pretty much that's what I, I, I see, right? Everyone loves and uses messaging Every day, it's probably safe to say that, uh, you know, everyone has one of more chat apps on, or on the phone. Uh, we, we use them every day, right? We use messaging to stay in touch with our family and the friends, and the experience has been great. And we've been doing more and more things like video calls, audio calls. That's all great. But on the other hand, the uh, potential of business messaging is largely untapped. We, we don't, don't really do much, much you know, uh, we don't really talk to business uh, via messaging. Uh, when we, whenever we would like to get, a, get in touch, we probably still need to make phone calls, uh, email them, um, you know, uh, go to web chat, sometimes even through form submission. Sometimes is uh, when we try to get help, right? So, which is really not great in, in my opinion. Uh, all those often, uh, don't work, uh, you know, you, you try to get a hold of them on the phone, you have to wait for 10, 20 minutes if you're lucky, and then you have to, oh, how did this, how, I, how do I spell my name? Uh, I have to read out my credit cards, I have to repeat myself, oh, sorry, uh, oh, you're not talking about the billing, let me trust for you, now you, you talk, you just repeat your whole story again. Uh, all those are not great. Um, so we, we, here we see, on the other hand, messaging uh, is a far superior uh, experience. Uh, it's uh, 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 asynchronous is two ways. Uh, you don't have to you know, stop whatever you're doing. You just kind of fire and forget. And uh, that's great. And uh, uh, companies are building new capabilities every day, right? You can... You can uh, uh, manage your appointments, you can run payments, all that. So here we're, we're, we're you know, I'm pretty excited about uh, bridging the gap, uh, using messaging and transform uh, this into a powerful and uh, efficient way of uh, business for business interactions. Um, so, and uh, also we're focusing a lot on uh, conversational commerce, like you pointed out. So uh, the idea is to allow people to uh, be, be able, able to, to like browse a product catalog, you know, get product recommendations, ask you know, all kinds of questions, and uh, eventually finalize the, the payment, finalize the transaction right, by running payments to have the full end-to-end uh, uh, -end shopping experience without downloading. I, I don't like, uh, want, uh, like the idea of downloading and managing uh, a, a, an app for every single brand alike. Uh, probably the, the merchants think the uh, same way too, right? They don't want you to do the, all the additional work. They just want to uh, uh, be able to engage and, and do business with you. So that's why, um, you know, we're pretty excited about the, this idea of bringing the full shopping experience uh, to messaging and without uh, uh, people doing the extra work. That's really cool. And to your point, yeah, uh, especially in, in the place where, where I'm living in, in Dubai and Middle East, you know, uh, actually we do, and because maybe you, 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 you know, you, you're very familiar with these chatting apps, but people sometimes get surprised. I tell them, you know, believe it or not, 
we do business transactions and business negotiations over these chatting apps. And the reason is because it's convenient, you know, like you have the phone in your pocket, all what you need to do to type. And then, as you said, because it's asynchronous, people can wait, you know, they don't have, it's not like, uh, you know, and for some reason, people love it more than email <laughs> for some reason. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I can tell you here in, in the region where I'm living, it's the standard, like business really, sometimes it's run fully on WhatsApp. I've, I've seen this or other like uh, chat applications. So hundred percent on this one. Now, I know, you know, the question is obvious, but you know, I, I love to hear from you now. Because you have also the, you know, the factor of AI into the picture. So how this is different uh, and on from, from, let's say, these bots that we see, they put them in customer uh, support. So how, how do you differentiate from that perspective? Well, first, we, we focus a lot on like marketing and transactions and, and uh, you know, uh, getting product recommendations, all that. So we're not doing much uh, uh, customer support today, uh, which is uh, a different business. Uh, the second is um, uh, we do use AI probably similarly uh, um, uh, everywhere um, in this whole uh, messaging experience. Uh, the, what, what I describe is it's, it's pretty, pretty everyone loves, loves it, but uh, 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 it has to work. Where sometimes we, we all got frustrated by the mention the, the chat app, a chat bot experience, uh, and uh, or you build a nice tools and platforms. Now you have to hire you know a couple of human agents to to help. And that, uh, on the other hand, we like to introduce this uh, new use case and uh, to to businesses and their customers without adding. The new work. Uh, hopefully, we can automate actually uh, minimize the work. So this is where AI is playing a big role. And uh, for example, I can give you a couple of examples why uh, we I think our uh, uh, solution is is is, is, is going to be a great uh, for a lot of people. One is um, marketing. Uh, all businesses need to do some marketing work. And they often make like marketing campaigns, all that for different events, holidays, or, or even promotions, right? So um, traditionally, if you run it for email or others, you have to really design everything, generate the copy, find the images, I'll decide who you sent to and all that. So uh, lots of work. Here we use AI to almost fully automate. Uh, we have a product called One Click Campaigns. Uh, uh, you, you just, just tell us, us what, what your goal is. is. For, For example, example, maybe you're a retailer. Retailer, you're trying to promote, I don't know, skincare products to your new user user who recently signed up, right? You just tell us, oh, I'm I'm doing this, and the AI will do the rest. We AI will uh, generate the the, the text, uh, generate the te images, um, and uh, adding buttons because WhatsApp, all the uh, and other similar platforms, they have very rich experiences. They have buttons, highly interactive. And now the, the beauty of our marketing uh, campaigns is they're not one term but multi multiple terms. Uh, so they can, for example, the first message, oh, we have this great promotion. By the way, everything is personalized, so people find it very relevant. People like this kind of experience. Oh, do you want to know more? Or oh, you want to opt out? If you want to know more, we show more messages, and you can have a conversation with our, our AI. You can get uh, uh, product recommendations. You have different questions uh, yeah, before making the purchase decisions. So people really like this uh, kind of decisions. We are. Uh, kind of also creative in this uh, process. So we have, uh, for example, sometimes we have, we give me five, we have some gamification, which is really kind of unique and interesting compared to this traditional marketing approaches. One example we had is uh, we can give me five the marketing campaigns, like we make it one like, oh, do you know when, I don't know, XYZ company was founded, then we show a couple of options uh, and as buttons, right? Just, just a simple tap. If you got the right, we give you 10% off. I think we really see this as a unique way, a way of uh, engaging uh, customers. And the ROI is great compared to email others. ROI has been huge. Uh, but this is not easy, right? If you do it, uh, need to do it manually. But with, with the AI, because we scrape, we have lots of data about uh, uh, your, your business. We know a lot. Everything uh, can, be, can be automated. 
you know, like, uh, this is, again, it's resonating with me as a consumer, you know, like, I always think about it. And unfortunately, some um, uh, retailers, because I know you focus on retailers and e-commerce, so they got it wrong. And you see this, you know, they copy paste the same thing. So you're telling me, here I will get some personalized aspect based maybe on some of the information on some of the transaction that I have done before with, with, uh, with you as, as the merchant, right? So now this is one part, but other than the, this, and you know, because we are talking here about the retail custom experience. So in your opinion, other than, you know, the few things, you, points you mentioned, what other gaps you, you, you think Connectly is also aiming to bridge in addition to this? Well, personalization is a, bi a big part of it. Other than that, um, uh, there is uh, a data gap. Um, um, we need to know a lot about your business in order to uh, in order to personalize that. We all like that experience, but we need to know a lot about your products, business, your audience, uh, not only to personalize the message, but personalize the cohorts, right? All of that, and uh, that's one. Um, Another challenge, uh, as I see here, is integrations. Uh, our goal is always to uh, make a plug-and-play turnkey solution. You know, you can you know, uh, uh, start your first campaign in five minutes, five minutes, something like that. But uh, to build the full solution, we need to uh, build lots of integrations into, uh, uh, into the platform. Uh, for example, we need to know where to get your product information, we need to uh, know where to fetch your uh, audience information. Um, and uh, not only we make those great campaigns and allow people to purchase, but we need to pass the data back. We need to show you great analytics. We need to show, pass some of the insights back to your system. Um, today, uh, nothing works in isolation um, uh, to make this fully automatic. Uh, we need to build lots of integrations, uh, marketing, billing, ticketing, customer support, uh, payments. So we're doing all, all of those. Yeah, that's great also, and to, to, to know about this. And this is for anyone in this space, especially retail, e-commerce, like you should have a look, I would say. Um, because I think, Yan, do you, do you see this is that, something optional anymore for retailers. I think this is a must have because otherwise they will be left behind. You know, and I'm asking you this because also I want to see your view, how things are going to move in the future. Like now, you know, it's like the customer experience, I would say, but where are you seeing this conversational AI taking us in the future? Well, it's, it's already happening as we, uh, as we speak. Uh, especially, especially uh, from where, uh, you know, the WhatsApp or messaging is already heavy as, you know, an important part of life, such as Latin America, Southeast Asia, the Middle East. Uh, we also have a lot of clients from the Middle East and, and Europe, right? Um, um, I, I, I fully agree. I, I think that this is to be actively thinking about adding this as uh, one additional growth channel. Uh, it's already happening. It's, uh, it's highly efficient. Uh, ROI is, is great compared to some other uh, communication channels. Uh, very effective. Uh, I see people not only engaging, but actually converting, uh, just finishing purchasing uh, of that. Um, plus, it's very easy to get started, right? So you don't need to... Uh, develop a, a new website, new app, or you know, have developers on that. Uh, plus, uh, hopefully, uh, most of the work is automated. Um, uh, especially for mid to smaller uh, uh, retailers, right? So, if you're large, you might be able to afford, you know, building your own app and running your own marketing campaigns. And especially those data driven, it's not easy, right? It's not like you can do everything manual. Uh, you have to, you know, using lots of data points to optimize your campaigns, optimize your audiences, all that. But not um, uh, every business uh, is able to do that, especially the smaller ones. They don't really have any resources or, or energy to do that. And here, uh, we 
uh, really building a, a plug and play platform. So to be enable the smaller ones so that, oh, you know, if you're Shopify or some other BTEX uh, 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 platform users, uh, you just uh, um, come to our platform, uh, so there were a few clicks, uh, you're to go, good to go. And it's always on, right? We decide that with the whole user journey, if you recently signed up, uh, we send you this message. Uh, if you're highly engaged, you know, we send you something different that if you are less active, we send you some messages to, to re-engage you. Uh, everything is automatic and uh, you don't have to uh, go to the, the, plus the experience, why experience is better is we all uh, received the, uh, like just marketing emails, like you said, first, they're not personalized, which is cookie cook, uh, cook, very cookie cutter. And uh, the first thing I, I, I saw is to, uh, up, uh, is to unsubscribe. So that's a big difference. Second is even I'm, if uh, when I'm interested, I click on it, I'm redirected to the website, I log it back in, adding the things to the card, I apply the coupon code, I finalize, right? Which is not really great, especially on the phone. And here on WhatsApp, oh, you saw this, you like it. Oh, um, tap one tap, I'm good to go. I'm ready to buy. You, you know everything about me. You know my uh, mailing address. You probably have a credit card on, on, already on, on the profile. Uh, you just need a confirmation. Uh, from me and to, to, to purchase with this number ending with one, two, three, four, uh, you're done, right? So um, I think this is going to be a great experience for everyone. Um, yeah, like, um, you know, you mentioned a couple of things uh, which are very important, actually, about, again, it's back to the personalization. And happy that you answered one question I had in mind, so it doesn't matter, you know, even if they are small. Because you talked about the data point, but I can understand that you can help them actually, even if they are small, to, to, to build the system for them, which is great. Now, one word you kept repeating, and I'm happy you are repeating it actually, which is automation. Because I talk a lot about automation and I tell people, you know, of course, AI is the buzzword, but, you know, in my opinion, the power is in automation. Of course, there is a power in AI. I'm not, I'm not denying this. But, but I, I love that you mentioned you this, and you know, how, how do you see, you know, like, you know, if you want to 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 judge, let's say, on a technology in general, like, which is more important to say, like, it's AI powered, or actually, it's to say it's it's automated? Yes, uh, automation is uh, is the key. Uh, I agree. You know, uh, we all love. Um, great result, but nobody wants to do the work. Let's be honest, myself included. Uh, uh, so uh, the more automate, uh, that we can automate, the better. Uh, so here, of course, uh, we uh, automate a lot through AI. I kept uh, uh, saying that, but also a lot of um, other like uh, integrations and uh, 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 workflow management, which is uh, actually very, very important. Um, for example, uh, if you can just set up the work, a uh, user journey once, and it's always on, it's there doing the work. It's a dream scenario, right? You don't have to come back to our platform every day and make a new marketing campaigns and engage people. Uh, it's sort of doing the work uh, automatically. And uh, while any users are, uh, are enjoying the experience, uh, our work is turning the messages into revenue, right? That's, that's the goal. Uh, uh, for example, like I mentioned, oh, uh, uh, if, um, we did, uh, detected, oh, you are um, uh, asking for um, product recommendations, then our AI module is, is triggered and, and then we'll, uh, you know, f looking for uh, recommendations in the back end, uh, fetch the latest and uh, recommending, um, you know, relevant uh, items to you, right? Or you're looking for, oh, uh, I don't know, sometimes I often, after, I get it started with a very vague idea rather than knowing what I'm looking for. You know, it's not like a one click, right? It's not always, you know, what you're doing. It's just looking for, uh, to purchase with the best price. Often I, I, I don't know what I'm buying. I'm, for example, maybe I'm buying a sweater, uh, for my wife, uh, but I need recommendation, right? I give the bot, our AI, uh, my budget. Uh, the color preferences, all that, and I get a couple of items. Then I give uh, AI uh, some feedback. Oh, 
I like the style, but uh, do you have something more affordable? I got more recommendations, right? All that. And then I have follow-ups. Uh, uh, is this uh, machine washable? Very, very common. Uh, I do it actually uh, all the time. I, I look for such detailed information, but only through the fine print. Right? I go to Amazon, I go to that. I go through every little detail. I mean, sometimes I go to YouTube for a couple of product right, reviews. But it's very time consuming. I, I don't necessarily do that every time because we don't have the I, I, I don't have the energy. But our AI uh, pre scan all such information. So instead of just doing all the work, uh, you can just ask our AI and uh, get all those information uh, answered. So I think this is a great experience. Um, and follow ups, right? It is, you can ask the AI, oh, after place more, where is my order? The AI knows we need to. Have a, like this is getting a little uh, technical, but you know AI is you know uh, able to uh, 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 have a API call to the third party, a backend, fetch the order information, and push it back to the to the client. WhatsApp, iMessage, right? So this is all examples of automation. I, I believe this is uh, this is the key to success. 100% and you know like a couple of months back I was running this kind of uh, educational series you know about especially when when you know the AI started to appear more you know with chat GPT and all things I was telling people it's not only about the generative AI itself it's the power of automating it and I said if you don't use automation like you're losing a lot actually and you know like just what what you mentioned now so you described it you know perfectly what is the pain today for the consumer or for the client and you know and we, every one of us love uh, live this and you are bringing you know the in-store experience you know when you have the assistant and you can go and talk to that so i bring me this to, to this world so i love it and by the way you know what one thing also it's a matter of fun just to, to throw some fun here when, when you, you said about the email that comes to you and you unsubscribe, which I think <laughs> but 99 percent of people they do. The, the funny thing is people which they get it wrong because they didn't implement it the right way. So I start to see these messages, and you know, there's a small note at the end saying, "Hey, this message was partially written with AI," and you know, it seems that they are using it in a not, I would say, proper way. The, the message, message is no one, one I'm sure had the time to maybe read it even once because just I will give you an example. I received just today an email such, you know, title is nice. The subject of the email is good. It's catchy, but you know, the way they tried to personalize it, they relied on an old data of mine. So they were talking about previous place where I used to work and I said, Okay, okay, now, now I, they, they scrape the data from somewhere. somewhere. It's not like, <laughs> so of course I unsubscribe because still, you know, and, but I love what you're doing and doing here because it's something a little bit different. Now, I want to switch a little bit gears and talk about, you know, the, the, the fact that being a co-founder and then, you know, because I know that recently you have, uh, and congratulations on that, raised your series A. So, so how is this experience to be into this startup, startup ecosystem, ecosystem, going to talk to VCs, investors? So how was this experience from your side? Oh, oh man, that's uh, uh, been quite a journey. journey. <laughs> Doing a startup, it's, it's, uh, like you can tell it's quite different from, uh, uh, you know, working at a large company. Uh, but it's been fun, uh, a lot of learning. Um, it's... Uh, well, well, it's, well, well fortunately, I being a CTO a couple of times and uh, I've navigated through, you know, different phases of, of, of uh, growth. I've been through some early stage, I've been through some uh, rapid expansion uh, growth. Uh, so that helped me a lot. Uh, I was able to bring a lot of experience into, into the job. Uh, that's one. And uh, I've been, fortunately, on both, both sides, sides of AI, AI including both the designing and also uh, application building. So that was good. Uh, but yeah, the, as a startup, it's a uh, it's, um, by definition, we face new challenges uh, every day, right? Um, even when we 
we talk about this great uh, shopping experience, um, the uh, for example, it's not uh, we didn't uh, uh, encounter any challenges. Uh, to give you one example is the data issue, all that, right? It does happen uh, every day. You know, it's all very pretty to 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 to, to describe the experience. In reality, you know, you have to deal with, for example, the data is missing. Uh, the merchant has a million different ways of describing the same size and color, right? You can imagine, especially working across different merchants. All those small, you know, issues uh, combined uh, it become big problems, right? You have to really be able to address those every day. Plus the fundraising, all that, you know, it's, we all know that uh, uh, it's not exactly easy to, to, to raise uh, these days. I'm very glad that we we're able to do that because of our strong growth, our, our vision, and strong team, all that. So, um, and hiring, I spent a lot of time hiring and building. Uh, speaking of AI, we, we put together a very strong AI team. We, we built, a, we hired some of the best talent uh, from the market. Um, we're, and uh, we're building uh, with um, some of the latest uh, technologies, including GPT-4, GPT-4 Turbo from OpenAI, Palm 2 from Google. And uh, we're also planning to uh, roll out our own models because we have lots of data. We have a huge amount of, you know, unique data uh, where we have uh, full performance feedback, right? This is very unique in my opinion. Uh, I want to uh, uh, spit a little bit more to it. it a lot of people, they build AI applications, but they don't necessarily have the, the performance feedback or, you know, how the data is used or how much performance uh, the data is bringing or, you know, how much help it's, it's data is, is doing for the business. On the other hand, for us, for every single message, we know exactly if the message was uh, opened, read, clicked on, if the people actually uh, purchased something. Uh, from, from the, the message, message and how much, if, if they, they did, how much of, uh, was the value, value right? We have the full, full performance feedback. So we're, that will enable us to build a fully tailored model other than those um, foundation models. Well, those models are great. We're going to continue tuning them, but I think it's to have the full experience to fully tune, uh, tailor the experience for our customers. We need to eventually build our own models. So. Um, that's, uh, that's the, some of the challenge which is, uh, we're facing by doing a startup, but I'm enjoying this. I'm building something, um, uh, new that people enjoy using our business growing day over day. I'm very happy with the progress so far. That's great to hear. And, uh, you know, I, you know, it's good that you mentioned the challenges because this is one of the things we also wanted to ask you and thank you for mentioning this. And it's an eye-opener what you mentioned, and this is, you know, especially for the techie people who listen to the show, you know, about, you know, I love the approach you took. So you relied on the available uh, large language models like GPT-4 and Palm and so on, but you are building your own because, you know, this is the question I always ask, especially if I'm talking to CTO or CPO on the show. And, and even sometimes I ask people who are like just, just from the business, business side, side and say, how comfortable are you in relying on a third party at the end of the day? Because, you know, there are like plenty of applications now that are built on OpenAI, basically, you know, and if OpenAI uh, API goes down, you know, like <laughs> everything goes down, right? So it's a good also eye opener. Now, uh, Yandoka has almost we are coming to an end, like now, I have also part of the audience, a lot of first time founders and, you know, I would say new entrepreneurs or fresh graduates. So if you want to, you know, we want to keep with them kind of some wisdom words, what you can tell us? Uh, that's a very good question, uh, Mehmet. Uh, so I've been thinking this a lot, uh, myself and especially I'm a first time founder too. And, uh, uh, to be honest, I'm learning a lot as we go. Um, but if I had to have to think of one piece of advice, uh, I would say that uh, now everyone is building something with AI, right? So, I, but you really need to figure out the one problem, one significant problem that AI can actually help with. 
that that's the key. Uh, we shouldn't be doing AI because everyone is doing AI, or uh, that's the way you think you can raise money, uh, or because the technology is getting so good. Oh, I have to add it to my product. Uh, you really need to identify one problem that AI can help uh, address, and you need to build a winning product uh, to to address that need. Uh, in my opinion, uh, either uh, need to uh, make life easier, uh, minimize work, or completely get rid of the work, or 10x the outcome. In our case, uh, actually both, right? So, uh, you know, one click, all that, always on. So uh, this is the key. And then you build a sustainable business, right? Uh, uh, but then and the only one to, uh, the only way to achieve, uh, to the only way to build a, a sustainable business is customers find it valuable. That's it. That's my simple recipe. Hope that helps. Uh, you know, you're, you're not only cracked it, I would say, as they say it in, uh, in English, but, you know, it's like spot on, really. And this is why um, we keep repeating it on the show again and again. And, you know, I don't see any harm in repeating it. Um, so you, you, you just summarized in a very nice way, and I would say in a simple uh, layman terms, as they say, like no one could not, you know, say, oh, no, I didn't understand what Leandro is saying. So thank you very much about, you know, the product market fit, you know, so you're solving a real problem. And, you know, you explain what this problem, you know, how you're solving it, like what's the outcome, 10x or save time, 100%, and, you know, the way to, to build things. So um, all are these... Uh, very valuable and great insights, I would say. So, Yandu, final thing, where people can find more about you and about Connectly? Yes, uh, they can go to connectly.ai uh, to find more information about the business and uh, they're very welcome to find me on LinkedIn, uh, send me a, 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 a connection request if they want to get in touch or, or my email. Yandong, Y-A-N-D-O-N-G, at Y-A-N-D-O-N-G. Great. I'll make sure I will put this information in the show notes. Again, thank you very much, Yandong, for the time today and for this great conversation. I really enjoyed it. I learned a lot also about how AI can benefit us in the retail and e-commerce business. And this is something what I love because it's, uh, let's say, like a Close, close to my heart when we talk about also small businesses. So it's good yes. to see that we can leverage AI not only for the big things, also on the small scale as well. So thank you very much for sharing this. And I advise everyone to go and check on connectly.ai. The URL will be in the show note. And as usual, this is how I end my episode. So for the people who are here the first time, if you're listening on your favorite podcasting app, don't forget to subscribe. And if you're watching this, also don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel. And if you are one of the loyal followers, thank you again for all your comments, all your feedback, all your suggestions. I read them all. And thank you for continuing supporting the show. And Again, I repeat this at the end of every episode, I know. But if you are interested to be on the show, if you have that great idea, you're doing something really different and you want to share it with you know, the rest of the world, this is a very open place where we can you know, have a casual chat as we did with the Yandong today. So don't hesitate to reach out to me and we can arrange this. Thank you very much for tuning in and we'll meet very soon. Thank you. Bye-bye. Hit that subscribe button. Share the show with your tech-savvy friends and fellow entrepreneurs. And leave us a review on your favorite podcast app. Your support means the world to us.